NelsonTripod.com bring you another original. It's fucking great. Recently I got to speak with Neocore Games regarding their upcoming Warhammer 40k title Inquisitor Martyr. I was speaking with David Marta, a PR manager, and Victor Johas, the lead narrative designer. This is what Victor had to say about the game. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr, it's a open world sandbox action RPG set in the 40k universe and starring, surprisingly enough, Inquisitors in the leading role. And in the supporting role, we have all the heretics and all the demons and, well, all sorts of threats that the Imperium of Man has to face on an everyday basis. You mentioned the heretics and demons. Are you focusing solely on the hereticus side of the Inquisition or are you bringing any aliens and any xenos? Oh, we are absolutely bringing in all the threats which are present in the 40k universe because um, Inquisitor Marty, it's an open world sandbox set in our own sector and the Imperium of Men. It means that it is a 40k setting, very much so, but it is our own as well. So as players are going to explore this sandbox sector, going on, on missions, uh, inquisitorial investigations, and a single player campaign as well, they are going to gradually open up the whole sector. And by that, we are trying to introduce as many elements from the official law as we can. There will be chaos, there will be heretics, and there will be xenos as well. Now, there's, there's a lot of Warhammer titles that are in development at the moment. Some set in the, the fantasy universe, some set in the, the 40k. What do you think makes Martyr stand out from the, the other ones that are in development? I think it's it's fairly easy to, to answer because we are very proud to say that we are the very first action RPG set in the 40k universe, which is both a challenge and a very satisfying experience for us. Well, if I can say so, we had some experience with action RPGs with previous titles, The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing, uh, the trilogy. We always thought that the 40k universe sort of lends itself to this genre and nobody has ever done this. So we really, really wanted to try it. I'm glad you brought up the Van Helsing games. Is there anything that you learned from developing those that you're implementing into Martyr? Oh yes, definitely. Well, when we finished Van Helsing, well, we learned the ropes and also we could do even more in the confines of the action RPG genre. So in Inquisitor Marty, we have implemented and we will implement plenty of things that uh, haven't been in, in, in the Van Helsing trilogy, like the destructible environment, um, a copious amount of blood and gore, cover system, and so on. And that's another huge difference. Van Helsing games were single player and co-op campaigns. In, in Inquisitor Marty, we have a whole open world, which requires certain, well, how could I put it, certain other lines of thoughts. So it was a great experience and we have made tremendous amounts of improvement. Grant, now uh, we understand that from uh, you know previous uh, press releases and the things you've said, there's two different elements uh, to Inquisitor Martyr. There's the uh, Inquisitorial campaign and then there's the, the single player story. We do have a uh, story mode, which is uh, which is um, a single player experience, and we do have the inquisitorial campaign, which is the open world game mode. Sometimes it's really hard to explain, although when the game will be ready, it will be fairly evident that the the inquisitorial campaign is basically what we have in the sandbox sector, where we have uh, inquisitors roaming the star systems and the subsectors, hunting down heretics and destroying, uh, for example, chaos demons. And the single player campaign, the story mode, is basically one grand inquisitorial investigation tailored especially for the character. It's the character's very, very own investigation, which for various reasons explained in the story itself is his or hers only. But the single player campaign, the story mode, is just one of the storylines which are present in this persistent sector. So when you're playing the game, you are going to see the star map of the sector. You're going to be able to choose missions. And sometimes these missions uh, tie 
into larger investigations where you discover clues. And then there is the single player campaign, which is on the star map, you can always go there, but that will be yours only. You can only play the story mode in a single player mode. And in the Inquisitoria campaign out there in the sandbox, you can have a co-op gameplay mode up to four players as well. So basically, that's the only difference, that the single player mode is a sort of a personal story uh, set in the same sector where all the other missions and investigations are available as well. Now, you, you mentioned that you've, you've got your own sector to work on in Marta. Do you intersect with any of the outstanding Warhammer lore or characters? Um, presently, we are not. We could do that, and we have, we have plans to insert certain elements. But first of all, we would like to focus on, on our own sector, because this sector has, it, has its own storyline. It has its own very specific and, and unique background. Well, obviously, it's all written under the guidance of Games Workshop, so we are not going to include anything which could be outside of the law. So for this reason, we could we, we could bring in famous characters as well, but it's always a tricky path. So presently, we are really focusing on our own stories, our own material, which will feel like canon material, at least. <laughs> I do really hope so as a writer. Getting to the, the actual gameplay itself, how would you liken the gameplay mechanics in Martyr to, a, say, a well-established gamer franchise? Or does it do everything its own way? It's an action RPG. For the most part, you are going to see the very classic action RPG elements, starting from the camera angle to, to leveling up, all sorts of things which are present in an action RPG. What we have here and what we consider as improvements they are all big pluses, which add to the classic action RPG g gameplay elements. And in this regard, I would say that Inquisitor Martyr is a very 40k action RPG, because uh, we really wanted to evoke the atmosphere of the 40k universe. So first of all, it's going to be more tactical. So instead of throwing at characters, um, I don't know, 1000 heretics, at a time, we would prefer focusing on your enemies moving in a more tactical way. You have to you have to move in a more tactical way. Your foes will will they will use covers? They will follow orders, which means that it will be the well, the well known action RPG gameplay. But at the same time, there will be some changes. Yeah, we actually wanted to make um, the players feel like that they are actually participating in a war. That's why uh, we reworked the complete AI from the Fan Helsing uh, trilogy in order that um, uh, in the enemy groups you've got different roles for the enemies. There are leaders, flankers, snipers and uh, all these different kind of enemies that are going to react to you absolutely differently. As uh, Victor mentioned, uh, instead of the traditional ARPG way as uh, bringing in ways and ways of enemies, you actually have to think how to approach uh, a situation. Okay, so there's a, a bigger tactical element to the, the gameplay than your usual hack and slash dungeon crawler. Yes, although I have to add that, well, I think that if you would like to play it, play the game in, in, in a more hack and slash way, I think you're absolutely free to do that. Absolutely. These are all, these are all just um, extras. Yeah, and uh, a lot depends on the character you're actually playing, the class of the character you're yeah, playing, because they, be, are all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are all providing absolutely different play styles. Yes. The one thing I love the most is that um, um, even though it's an action RPG, it's a Warhammer 40k action RPG, and you know, there are certain things, um, um, in, for example, Fan Helsing, that, uh, we, uh, that an ARPG player <clears throat> would like to see in a game. For example, the loot system, the crafting system, and all this stuff. But um, the traditional way, as you would do it in an ARPG, doesn't necessarily fit into the 440k universe. So there are certain things that we had to do absolutely differently. And it's the most challenging and the most exciting part in the same time of the development. Because we are doing things that nobody has ever done before, Because simply, simply because nobody has ever had to do it before. So it's a very, very exciting thing to actually put together faithful to the lore ARPG in the 40k universe. 
coming back to the the characters, can you tell us about some of the classes that players will get to to experience in 40k universe? Well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a um, it's a tricky question because yes, there will be classes, and they are all going to represent one of the different approaches that that uh, inquisitors can have in the mm-hmm. 40k universe. As we know, inquisitors are not really that restricted in most of their dealings and backgrounds as, for example, the Space Marines are. And we would really like to use that to our advantage. Presently, we have well, we have already announced one of the classes. This is what we call a Crusader class Inquisitor. An Inquisitor with heavy armor, heavy weaponry, shield, is going to be our heavy, our tank type character. There will be more and I'm not so sure if I could mention this, but soonish there might be some some revelations about <laughs> about uh, classes. But uh, this is all I'm allowed to say. Stay tuned for more news because um, we're going to announce it very soon, and uh, we're going to give um, give everyone a sneak peek into the new class that uh, we're going to announce. There are going to be three in the game. Well, to begin with. To begin with, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to announce the next one very very soon. All we actually communicating at the moment is that um, uh, they are all represent very different play styles as well. So it's going to be a total different game of uh, uh, gameplay experience. Can I ask though, is there any customization options when you pick your class? Do you get a standard template, or can you create your own Inquisitor? I would say that the classes, as you are leveling up, as in most action RPGs uh, you do, there will be a very visible change. Uh, in your character's outlook. There are certain set elements because it's a 40k game and there are certain visual elements that that we really want to stick to. On the other hand, yes, you are going to have your chance to to customize your character's outlook to a certain extent. So a little bit of both. The leveling up system that you mentioned, can you tell us a little bit about how that will actually work with not just the progression of the the game and the story, but possibly any abilities or skills that you might be able to unlock? There will be skill trees, for example. There are a lot of things which are still unannounced and I'm going to need to keep it that way. But I can tell that much. There will be active and passive skill trees and as you are progressing you are going to you are going to unlock certain sections. Weapons and skills in Inquisitor Martyr are basically the same. It means that certain classes have weapon skills that other classes won't have. And there will be passive skills which are going to spice up the range of your active skills. It means that that you won't really have the same two Crusader class Inquisitors, even if you are playing in a co-op game. Yeah, and um, progression also, um, for, for example, uh, it's it's not only the progression of your character in a, of um, in a well traditional sense of way because uh, you are progressing in the inquisitorial campaign as well. Yeah, this, so you can yeah, actually this is gain reputation. Important. Yes, this is very important because as I as I mentioned earlier, in the Caligari sector we are calling our own sandbox sector the Caligari sector. In the Caligari sector there will be hundreds of star systems, so it, it's a large area, and in certain areas when you are participating in inquisitorial missions or when you are participating in events which are basically large-scale happenings which might influence the future of a particular region, you will be able to influence the events and you will be able to increase your reputation as well. Uh, Later on, you are going to participate in the various um, squabbles and alliances between the inquisitorial ordos and factions. So there will be plenty, plenty of opportunities to basically flesh out your character and progress in other areas as well, apart from your looks and your skills. You mentioned just there about getting into some of the infighting within the Inquisition. Is there going to be an element of PvP along with the co-op players that you mentioned earlier? Well, we won't have a direct PvP, but as we are going to introduce the Inquisitorial Fortresses, which are the um, headquarters of the Inquisitors. Each character can have his or her own um, Inquisitorial Fortress. 
And this is this is the part where we would like to evoke that sense of constant warfare in the shadows among the various factions of the Inquisition, which means that Inquisitors are not not fighting directly, but they are squabbling indirectly, and you can attack other people's fortresses, and they can attack your fortress if they if they see the need to it, and if they are successful um, fighting to your um, retinue and your defense systems. So you won't be there, but your devices and 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 um, allies will be there. Well, then then they can get away with your secrets and your loot. Yes, and along with actually progressing your character, you can actually progress your fortress as well. This is the the indirect PvP, as we call it. When you say you can upgrade the fortress, I assume that would be placing defences and things like that. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's, that sounds really interesting. It's, that almost has an element of the Metal Gear Solid forward base system. Let's get to what I think everyone really wants to talk about when you talk about Warhammer 40k. Let's talk about the weapons. Can you tell us what weapons uh, we're likely to see in Martyr? Luckily for us, Inquisitors are not that restricted in the law as as um, other factions are, which means, generally speaking, we are going to give you most of the gear that's available in the 40k universe. Our Crusader class Inquisitor that we have already introduced in these early builds, uh, for example, he is using a chainsword, a bolter, and he also has a plus gun. So there will be all sorts of uh, gear to choose from. As skills are tied to weapons and and skills are, are tied to, to certain character classes, it means that uh, different characters will be able to wield different weapon sets. I can't talk about this without actually talking about the different classes. Yes. Because um, <laughs> now we can only talk about the Crusader and the limits, the stuff that we can uh, we can tell you about the weapons themselves. But that does bring us quite nicely on to destructible environments. It's been mentioned a few times and, of course, you released the video a couple of weeks ago about it. How do the weapons tie into the destructible environments, um, other than the length of time it will take to actually blow it apart? Different weapons will have different effects on the environment. So they have different attack modes. So basically, there will be weapons, for example, which have an area of attack. They will affect, for example, a pillar that could be collapsed. It will affect that given pillar differently than a bolter, for example. At this stage, it's a bit too early to give any details about specific weapons. But when we when we came up with the idea of a destructible envi environment, we wanted to to focus on the different weapon types as well. So I think it's it fairly possible that you are going to see different kinds of destruction in the final game. But it's a bit too early to to, to talk about this these details yet. Environmental destruction is not just a cosmetic feature. Uh, it has a very serious gameplay effect as well, and um, and, uh, and it also gives you um, another tactical layer to the gameplay because you can actually destroy cover uh, covers as well. And there are certain weapons that actually don't even have to because of the area effect they have. Yep. You don't even yep. have to uh, destroy uh, of, uh, destroy the cover in order to damage the enemy that hides behind it. For example, just to give you one recent example that we have in our current build. For example, if you're using a bolter and your foe is hiding behind a barricade, for example, while you are using the bolter, you will be slowly and gradually destroying that particular cover. While the um, second attack mode of the plus gun, which overheats very quickly but deals out one massive burst of plasma energy, it will deteriorate the whole cover in one blast. So that's one of the differences even though the environmental destruction looks awesome, uh, there's going to be a video very soon that's going to show you what these weapons are actually doing to the enemies themselves, <laughs> which is going to be the most exciting part. Because it's good to see that a uh, cover is being blown up, but when uh, an actual heretic is blown into pieces, that's, that's something to look at. <laughs> I can imagine. I, ca I can't wait for that. That's going to be amazing. The, the last thing I'm really interested in is... The, the actual story, is there anything you can tell us about the actual plot of Martyr at this early stage? 
as we discussed it a bit earlier, there are well, numerous storylines going on, and we have two very different kinds of stories in, in Inquisitor Marty. There is this personal inquisitorial investigation that your character can overtake the story mode, the single player campaign, which is set on a haunted, abandoned fortress monastery tied to a very, very dark secret from the past of the Inquisition. Your personal investigation will lead your, you and your character, obviously, through the decks of this haunted fortress monastery and back to the day when the Inquisition or certain Inquisitors were dabbling with things they shouldn't have. Um, this is a traditional uh, story campaign. It has a beginning, a middle and an end, told uh, through cutscenes, dialogue. So this is this is what you usually expect from an action RPG single player campaign. In the Inquisitorial campaign out there in the in the sandbox sector, we are going to unlock various storylines. Storylines can be tied to certain areas, like to planets, star systems, because the Caligari sector has its own background, which has something to do with sudden and local wolf storms. So the, the whole sector is sort of fractured, and it is a very backwater sector out in the southern rim near the Segmentum Tempestus. So this is where most of the refugees fled from the Imperium of Man. This is where in the shadows all the dangerous ideas can grow freely. So in other words, this sector is the ideal hunting ground from the Inquisition. When we are introducing the events, which are these very special occurrences, which sometimes grow out of these chains of investigations, it means that when you are roaming the Caligari sector, you are going to find dozens of shorter or longer story chunks, if I could say so. Yeah, and with, uh, with the events, what we pretty much, uh, because it's an ongoing storyline and we want to keep the sector alive for a very, very long time. So Victor has a lot of little pieces and conflict, pieces of story and conflicts in store that um, we're going to release later on as uh, content patches that are going to keep keep the players invested in the game, that they want um, the firm, that they can follow up with the story. Events are very important because they give you uh, a chance to to influence the storylines. So, for example, if we have a star system where we have an orc invasion, and at the same time in that star system we also have a very, very corrupted hive city with a very corrupted noble aristocracy, which have been too strongly tied to the Dark Eldar. When these occurrences clash, that there is the Orc invasion and the Dark Eldar try to use that to achieve their own villainous agenda, then you as an Inquisitor, you have to choose which one of these threats will be your focus. Are you going to deal with the Dark Eldar? Are you going to deal with the Orcs? Anyway, you will take a side. And if you deal with the... Uh, let's say you deal with the orc infestation, the orc danger, for example. It means that meanwhile, the Dark Adder, they they could be even stronger than they used to be. So in the system, your next storyline, your next event will be most probably about facing the Dark Adder. So this is just one of the examples how we... How we... It depends on the majority of the players, actually. Yes. Right? So um, basically, after every event, so so for example, if the majority of the P, uh, majority of the players have uh, decided to actually deal with the orc threat, then probably the dark Eldar will get a foothold on that uh, certain region. So basically, on the meta gaming level, we're gonna see what are the majority of the players actually decided, and that's gonna influence the next event. Yeah. For example, this is this is how we are going to introduce various Xenos races and and chaos factions through these events and, and content patches. So it's more of a persistent large scale thing across the board rather than procedurally generated purely for your version. Absolutely. We would really like to create uh, a sector which feels very much alive, which is a very 40k sector and which could offer you hundreds of hours of gameplay without being boring. Yeah, without actually having to grind 
yeah. for hours on the same exact maps. Uh, these events are going to be set pieces, but um, uh, the rest of the planets and uh, of, uh, the rest of the star system are actually uh, randomly generated. Most of the missions will be randomly generated because we are using sort of prefabricated segments that we are going to piece together randomly. So it, it means that the segments will be familiar, but you won't see the same map twice. And we are going to have planet surfaces, hive cities, moons, so diversity is a, is a key feature. Every time you enter a mission, you are entering an action RPG map. So it's a very, very important thing to know that we are an action RPG. We are going to have in investigations because it's a very, very important part of being an Inquisitor, but it's, it's an action RPG to the core. We're going to have some very, very exciting stuff coming out. We've, uh, we, we've been on a hiatus right now, but we've been working very, very hard in the past couple of months. And uh, there's some very, very uh, exciting stuff coming their way. Inquisitor Martyr is going to release next year, 2017, on PS4, Xbox One and PC. Make sure you stay tuned for all your Inquisitor needs. If you enjoyed this interview, then please like, comment and subscribe. For all your gaming needs, there's only one place to be.